Good afternoon, Cowboy Jim, Fort McMurray, up here in the north of Alberta, Canada. Thank you so much for watching. Um, continuing on the saga, the record, the a path that Jesus the Christ, the Son of the Living God, traveled. And at this point in time, uh, Luke chapter 9 uh, Jesus sends his disciples, uh, the 12 of them, uh, out to minister. And it's very, very interesting that there were 11 good men and one evil, evil intended man, that being Judas Iscariot. And the disciples uh, were told, uh, only take one coat, don't take any money, um, just in uh, no script, I believe, um, just go uh, two by two and enter into the villages roundabout um, and spread out and preach the gospel. This was to give them an opportunity, the disciples, to lay the groundwork through the wisdom of God and the unction of the Holy Spirit to lay the groundwork for their future ministries after that Jesus is gone. And they they uh, were given power and authority by God, by Jesus, to cast out demons, uh, to heal, uh, to preach, uh, to speak, uh, to represent, well represent, I might add, uh, who and what God and Jesus Christ really are all about. And they did. And they came back to Jesus and they said, it is just so amazing. The demons actually are obedient to what we said. And, and this is where my Irish humor uh, comes into play. Because... Jesus sent out 12 disciples, 11 good and 11, the 12th one uh, was of the devil. Okay. He was claiming to be a believer in Jesus, but he truly was of Satan, of the devil. And it does not say here that he was the only one who could not cast out demons, or the only one who could not implement healing from God through the name of Jesus Christ. That devil man called Judas Iscariot, the one who uh, for 30 pieces of silver sold um, Jesus down the drain. He sold Jesus his whereabouts, where the soldiers could go and arrest him, and so on. And so when you are dealing with preachers, evangelists, people of note, um, remember Judas Iscariot. He, Judas, pulled it off so that people actually um, thought that he was a sincere believer in Jesus. He wasn't. He was an absolute hypocrite who reverenced by his actions, probably by his, his word too, but, but definitely by his actions. He reverenced who Satan was. That's what he did. But he blended in quite well and was thus accepted as being um, a true disciple of Jesus. He was no disciple of Jesus. He was a self-made hypocrite, probably a little narcissistic, but he was evil. His intent was evil, and yet he got by pretending to be something special. And there is the crux of, of modern-day religion. Because a preacher lays claim to being um, thus and so before the Lord, 
some vaunted leader, some significant leader. It does not mean a thing unless that leader, that preacher, that in this case, disciple, lived out what it was that he said. And Judas did not live out what he said. He blended in with the other 11 disciples, and he was able to cast demons out and and preach and pray and heal and all that stuff. But he was a devil. Simple. So you are admonished in scripture. Um, Look at the fruit. I mean, consider the fruit. Just because someone says they are this great and wonderful leader in evangelism or anything else, whether it's just a preacher, because you do not know what a person truly believes unless you study how and what they do, not not what they say, because what they say is not nearly as important as what they do. Now, I have had the privilege and the honor, hey, I'll be 75 come October, of meeting a lot of so-called preachers. And not all of them were good. Not all of them were bad. But there were were good and bad Uh, godly and ungodly, mixed in in the whole group. And you as an individual, um, I'm sure you probably met people who laid claim to be Christian, but if you looked at their lives, you saw no proof or evidence that they ever were. How could they be? They're no different than anybody else. Actually, quite often, people who claim to be Christian and aren't are worse than most everybody else. So use some smarts. By that, I mean, well, that's pretty self-explanatory, but judge what, don't judge a person, judge what it is they do, not so much what they say. Because what they say is totally meaningless. It is what they do that counts. That will give you a a look into their heart. Um, I mentioned about a a lady I stared into her eyes for four minutes. Uh, I, I had plenty of time after that. I mean, I was being drugged at the time by a co-worker at work Uh, feeding me uh, psychiatric drugs, and I simply lost my mind, and I did. I went from being one of the, uh, one supervisor told me, he said this, he said, you have gone from being the best truck driver in the mine to being the worst, and I had. Couldn't argue that, I had. But, I mean, I looked into that lady's eyes, and it was like, And I did a video one time on it. I said, what I saw was eternity. Well, I don't know really what I saw. Um, I mean, uh, without question, the most beautiful uh, woman I had ever met in my entire life. But I I didn't know her. I don't know her. Um, I remember from three years ago uh, how gorgeous she was, but I don't remember... Uh, because I never had the chance to learn what she was actually like. That's the same. Uh, Preachers, uh, people who claim to be Christians, um, they may sound and look uh, appropriate, correct, right, but until you get to know them, you don't know. You don't have a clue. Like, you really don't. And so, um, don't, don't believe when a person tells you they're they're Christian, but watch them, study them, see if there's some evidence to back up their words. 
if there is no evidence, and I'm not telling you to judge them, that's not what you're doing. You are inspecting the fruit of what they say they are. Simple. Okay. Uh, the 12 disciples came back, 11 good, uh, 12th one, a devil. And uh, they they were quite impressed uh, with the power that Jesus had bestowed upon them and, and pretty taken up with with what they were able to do in the name of Jesus Christ in terms of saving, healing, all that sort of stuff. And Judas, the devil man, he was just as successful, evidently, as the real disciples were. So it's a cautionary thing. Just because someone claims to be a, a preacher, claims to be a Christian, I don't believe that. I don't. I study. I study what that person's life actually is. I had the privilege and the honor mm, 35 years ago of staining and lacquering uh, a man's uh, house, a, a new house. And the builder and the man walked in when I was doing my last minute touch-ups at about five o'clock, uh, the day, the night before the owner was to take possession. And unbeknownst to me, uh, the little tiny compressor, compressor that ran my airbrush, uh, powered the air for my airbrush, had knocked a quart jug of black shading lacquer over. Uh, onto the brand new linoleum. Thank God it wasn't carpet. But in hindsight, probably wouldn't have mattered. And um, the homeowner, uh, longest fingers you have ever seen. Oh my goodness, he is waving them right in my face. And uh, the builder said, don't worry, tomorrow morning, I'll have a brand new uh, uh, kitchen floor for you. And I thought, sure. And I'm going to blessed bloody pay for it. I couldn't afford my own kitchen floor. So they left. Um, I sat there and I had taken my shirt off and every rag I could get my hand on to try to dry the floor up. And, um, and I, I got to try. But there was about a three foot circle of linoleum that was three eighths plus uh, uh, inches, three eighths of an inch thick. And it was gray and it was ugly. I washed it with lacquer thinner. Didn't do a thing. Didn't do a blessed thing. And uh, uh, so everyone was gone. I gathered my crap up and I, I sat, I was so dejected. And I sat beside this uh, black, uh, gray, dark, dark gray on white lino. Uh, area. And I thought, what would Jesus do? Well, I thought, well, simple, Jesus. He would uh, put his hand on it, speak healing into it, it would be healed. I thought, okay, let's take a shot at it. Put my hand on it, spoke healing into it, told it to be healed. Nothing happened. Not a blessed thing. Hmm. So anyways, I walked my tools out to my truck. I think, I'm not sure if I was driving the van or the truck, whatever. <coughs> and I went home, had supper, could hardly eat. I was so dejected. I wasn't feeling sorry for myself. I, I just felt ashamed that I'd screwed up, ruined the floor, going to cost money, come off my bill. Uh, the phone rang, 7 o'clock. The guy said, uh, what did you do to my floor? I said, sir. He said, what did you do to my floor? He wasn't nice. I didn't like him anyways. Uh, I said, well, sir, I believe I have ruined it. He said, look, my wife and I have been down on our hands and knees for the last half hour. I thought that's a good place for you, son. Hey, that's a good place for you. You, you you need to start there. 
on your hands and knees, and you need a better attitude. I'm Irish. It's just a blessed good thing. That's all I thought. Okay. And uh, he said, you don't understand. He said, my wife and I have been on our hands and knees for the last half hour. This was two hours after I prayed. And he said, we cannot find the mark. I said, you got to be kidding. He said, we can't find the mark. I said, that's unbelievable. Well, he said, you're, you're going to tell me what you did. And he said, if, uh, he said, I'm, I'm not paying for the floor. If next week or next month or next year, um, it falls apart. I said, well, and he said, you're telling me. I said, okay. I said, I put my hand on the middle of it and I commanded it in the name of Jesus Christ to be healed. He said, you did what? I said, I put my hand on the middle of that giant blessed bloody mark on your floor and I commanded it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to be healed. He hung up. Imagine, he was my pastor. My pastor. He was a jerk. He was an absolute jerk. You would think that a real preacher would tell that story in a service, in a sermon. He never mentioned it to anyone because he was not in the habit of sharing the limelight with anyone, no matter the cause. He should have told the whole blessed story and brought glory and honor unto God and Jesus, the power in Jesus' name. No, he did not have enough fruit, as far as I was concerned, to convict him of being a Christian, and he was a preacher, and a preacher of many, many, many years. And I thought, a lot of good you would do for a family of believers who were in dire straits. I just moved my shoulder a, a little bit, trying to take the pressure off it. It's broken. Um, I prayed for it. God said he'd take care of it. Some healing takes a few days. Some healing takes forever. Some healing is immediate, as with my son, uh, Big Scott. Okay? Okay, I'll concentrate. Just because a preacher seems to have a handle on who and what God is does not mean that that has made any impact in their life. You meet a preacher who uh, is more impressed with himself than seemingly with God. Uh, you met an idiot. It's simple. Okay. Uh, the disciples came back and the uh, people crowded around Jesus. And they were in a desert place. Uh, Jesus had gone to a desert place and the people followed. And he healed everyone that he... he um, he, he could. Everyone that walked up to the front, everyone, he healed them, cast out demons, uh, spoke healing, all those things. The disciples said, probably led by Judas Iscariot, because he carried the purse, the money. Okay. And uh, the, the disciples said, we got to send these people away because, I mean, uh, it's late in the day. And perhaps they can go to some place in the surrounding countryside and buy food for themselves. There were 
5,000 men in that group, which means probably 15 to 18,000, counting the women and the children. It was unbelievable. And uh, Jesus says, well, you feed them. To his disciples, they said, are you kidding? We should go and buy food for this number of people. And Jesus said, um, well, what, what do you have? And they said, we have five loaves of bread and two fish, fishes, fish. And Jesus says, well, set them all down in uh, groups of 50. And so they were told to cluster together and sit on the ground in groups of 50. Now, somewhere between 15 and 18,000 people. And Jesus took the bread and the fish, blessed it, uh, break it up, and handed it to the disciples. And, I mean, the disciples, um, they just started distributing food to 5,000 men um, and women and children, so fifteen to 18,000 people. When they were all fed, they gathered up 12 baskets of leftovers. 12 baskets of leftovers. Jesus had done another miracle of miracles of miracles and fed that many people. And then when they were full, he sent them away and they headed home with full bellies. That's my Jesus. The question is, is that your Jesus? Have you made a choice to believe in God? Have you humbled yourself and prayed that simple prayer? God, forgive me. I accept that Jesus Christ is your son, that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for my sins. I am sorry for having lived the way I have. Help me to be what you want me to be. This is the week leading up to Easter, the crucifixion, the resurrection. And I just want, not you learned ones, not you who have been in church all your life. I have to move my arm, it's hurting. Um, but what I want is to present Jesus, the Christ, my Lord and Savior, to, let's say, the common man. Let's say the average, rugged, rough, tough uh, man and or woman and or teenager. And I want to paint for you a few pictures as this week goes by. I'm going to try to do at least three videos a day, but I may fail. I may do better. I have no idea. You see, because it doesn't matter. It, it's it's what God said uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I said, do you want to make a video? And he said, of course I do. I said, wonderful. I said, uh, what's the subject matter? He said, it doesn't matter. I said, what, what, what do you mean it doesn't matter? Like, I, I need a point of reference, eh? I need a title. I need... Man, eh, general idea, what direction I'm going on. He said, no, nope, nothing, not telling you anything. Except I will say, he said, I will say that whatever video subject content you choose, as long as it sticks to the tenets of scripture, I, God, will bless it. And I, God, will draw all men, man, unto the cross. So God is intent upon presenting you with the choice of salvation. Do you choose to believe that Jesus is who he said he was? Also who God said that he was? Or are you going to walk in your own 
self-righteousness. You can. It's your choice. It's up to you. I I sneak a look at my Bible. And um, I think, oh my, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him in Jesus should not perish, but have everlasting life. Are you going to uh, sign on uh, by humbling yourself and praying and asking God to forgive you? Accepting that Jesus Christ is his son, that he, Jesus, did suffer, bleed, and die on the cross for your sins? Or are you going to reject? It's your choice. It's, it's, it's your choice. No one else can choose for you. It's your choice. Choose wisely, children. God bless you. You all take care now from Fort McMurray. Thank you. God bless.